Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Buccaneers Daily. My name is Jackson. I post daily Bucks content, so hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Guys, the NFL season is less than a week away. It is Sunday, September 4th, and PFF.com dropped power ranking article, and they have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at number two, which I absolutely love to see. I personally have the Bucks at number one, but I can definitely see the argument for the Buffalo Bills as being the top squad on a power ranking tier. So we're going to go ahead and react to this because there's a little bit of uh, info and we'll just actually get right into it. So they did a biggest strength, a biggest weakness and an X factor. And in today's video, I think we're going to do biggest strength and biggest weakness. So what they put for biggest strength, the Buccaneers lost the number one wide receiver in PFF's wins above replacement metric over the last decade, Antonio Brown, and replaced him with the number two player on that list, Julio Jones. Jones isn't the same player who paced the position for much of his career, but he still projects as a nice third or fourth option alongside Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and Russell Gage. Tom Brady will once again have the best receiving corps in the NFL at his disposal. So, just 100%. You know, just 100%. You have not only the best quarterback of all time in TB12, you have just a stacked offense. Like, it, it doesn't even just end with the top four wide receivers. And it was already, like, a completely stacked offense before the addition of Julio Jones. Russell Gage, I've talked about him time and time again. To me, he is my X factor for this upcoming season because, especially with the injuries to Chris Godwin, with uh, Julio Jones's injury history, I anticipate Russell Gage having a huge impact just like he did when he had to fill in as wide receiver one whenever Julio got hurt or Calvin Ridley most recently over in Atlanta. He is as consistent as they come. And as this article kind of talks about with Julio, and I don't even need to talk about Mike Evans and Chris Godwin because that's one of the best, if not the best, one-two punch wide receiver duo in the entire NFL. In fact, I would go ahead and put it at number one right here right now. But Julio Jones, as this article is saying, man, you don't need him to be wide receiver one Julio Jones like maybe they needed in Tennessee or wide receiver two Julio Jones like Tennessee. Wide receiver four for Julio is perfectly fine, man. Put him in on third downs, put him in the red zone, and let him do his thing and come play off time. The chemistry is going to be going, the offense is going to be going, and that's really where you're going to see Julio Jones just out of edge and torch defenses. All you need is a healthy, situational Julio Jones. You have so much talent on the offensive end. I'd even throw in Kyle Rudolph and Cameron Bray at the tight end position. Their wide receiver room is looking stacked as usual. You just got to stay healthy. And this is why you have this crazy depth on the offense. So I absolutely love it. And I completely agree that the wide receiver core is the wide receiver, or, sorry, is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers greatest strength. Biggest weakness. I've already kind of like briefly glanced at this. It's definitely offensive line. I'll save my opinion for after it. The injury to Ryan Jensen created a situation where three new starters will start on Tampa Bay's interior offensive line. One of them, Shaq Mason, who is an absolute beast, that's not an article, happens to be a top guard in the NFL, but left guard and center remain concerns, especially given that Brady has been closer to the middle of the pack when pressured since 2020. Brady ranks second in clean pocket passing grade over the past two years combined to 10th out of 32 qualifiers when pressure. So when I take a look at the offensive line, when I kind of look at what he's, what this article is talking about here, we've talked a ton on this channel about the addition and the acquisition in trade of Shaq Mason. I mean, you lost a clutch offensive lineman to retirement. You lost clutch offensive lineman to free agency to go to the Cincinnati Bengals. You had to make some moves. And they got, not only did they get Shaq Mason as a steal, but Shaq Mason in his own regard is a steal. I mean, this guy had an 86.4 PFF grade last season. So, at the moving on to the interior, you got Luke and Robert down there. Two very young, relatively inexperienced. Luke is a rookie, drafted this pattern in this past draft. You have Robert Hainsey, who was the back of Terrain Jensen last season. I actually don't have a problem with that. I really don't have a problem with that. The, here's the thing. The Bucks coaches and the Bucks in general, they like what they see right now. Because if they didn't, a move definitely would have been made. And the good news is NFL rosters are built and created for them, you know, developed the whole nine yards in 52 weeks. Now, you don't just make an offseason, or it's just not the offseason when you're making your roster. So, although that's where a big 
majority chunk of it is done. I have no issues specifically with Robert Hainsey. I have no issues. If Ryan Jensen comes back, the more the merrier. So I think Tom Brady doesn't hold the ball for too long, and they have enough receivers, especially uh, running back receivers. There's plenty of options. There's solid tight ends on the squad. The Kyle Rudolph acquisition, I think, will probably go under the radar until the start of the regular season, and I just don't have any issues with that. For my X Factor, I'm 100% going Russell Gage, as I noted to earlier in the video. That really is it for today, man. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit that sub button for daily Buccaneers content. But I want you guys to go ahead and do, drop some comments down below on the Bucks. That's it. Peace.